seem a little thing to those who consider only the majesty of the Ainur, and not their terrible sharpness, as who should take the whole field of Arda for the foundations of a pillar, and so raise it until the cone of its summit were more bitter than a needle, or who consider only the immeasurable vastness of the world, which still the Ainur are shaping precision to which they shape all things therein. But when the Ainur had beheld this habitation in a vision, and had seen the children of Iluvatar arise therein, then many of the most mighty among them bent all their thought and their desire towards that place. And of these Melkor was the chief, even as he was in the beginning the greatest of the Ainur who took part in the music. And he feigned, even to himself at first, that he desired to go thither and order all things for the good of the children of Iluvatar, controlling the turmoils of the heat and the cold that had come to pass through him. But he desired rather to subdue to his will both elves and men, envying the gifts with which Iluvatar promised to endow them. And he wished himself to have subjects and servants, and to be called Lord, and to be a master over other wills. But the other Einar looked upon this habitation set within the vast spaces of the world, which the elves call Arda, the earth, and their hearts rejoiced in light, and their eyes beholding many colors were filled with gladness. But because of the roaring of the sea, they felt a unquiet, and they observed the winds and the air, and the matters of which Arda was made, of iron and stone, and silver and gold, and many substances. But of all these water they most greatly praised, and it is said by the Eldar that in water there lives yet the echo of the music of the Einar more than in any substance else that is in this earth. And many of the children of Iluvatar hearken still unsated to the voices of the sea, and yet know not for what they listen. Now to water had the Ainu, whom the elves called Ulmo, turned his thought, and of all most deeply was he instructed by Iluvatar in music. But of the airs and winds Manwe most had pondered the noblest of the Ainur, of the fabric of earth, had Ule thought to whom Iluvatar had given skill and knowledge scarce less than to Melkor, but the delight and pride of Ule, as in the deed of making, and in the things made, and neither in possession nor in his own mastery, wherefore he gives and hoards not, and is free from care, passing ever on some new work. And Iluvatar spoke to Ulmo, and said, Seest thou not how here in this little realm in the deeps of time Melkor hath made war upon thy prophets? He hath bethought him of bitter cold and moderate, and yet hath not destroyed the beauty of thy fountains, nor of thy clear pools. Behold the snow, and the cunning work of frost, Melkor hath devised heats and fire without restraint, and hath not dried up thy desire, nor utterly quelled the music of the sea. Behold, rather, the height and glory of the clouds in the ever-changing mists, and listen to the fall of rain upon the earth, and in these clouds thou art drawn nearer to Manwe, thy friend, whom thou lovest. Then Olmo answered, Truly, water is become, now fairer than my heart imagined. Neither had my secret thought conceived the snowflake, nor at 
was taken away and hidden from their sight. And it seemed to them that in that moment they perceived a new thing, darkness, which they had not known before except in thought. But they had become enamored of the beauty of the vision and engrossed in the unfolding of the world which came there to be, and their minds were filled with it, for the history was incomplete, and the circles of time not full wrought when the vision was taken away, and some have said that the vision ceased ere the fulfillment of the dominion of men and the fading of the firstborn. Wherefore, though the music is over all, the valor have not seen as with sight the later ages or the ending of the world. Then there was unrest among the Ainur, but Eluvatar called to them and said, I know the desire of your minds, that what ye have seen should verily be, not only in your thought, but even as ye yourselves are, and yet other. Therefore I say, Ea, let these things be, and I will send forth into the void the flame imperishable, and it shall be at the heart of the world, and the world shall be. And those of you that will, will may go down into it. And suddenly the Einar saw afar off a light, as it were a cloud with a living heart of flame. And they knew that this was no vision only, but that Iluvatar had made a new thing, Ea, the world that is. Thus it came to pass that the Einar, some abode still with Iluvatar, beyond the confines of the world, but others, and among them many of the greatest and most fair, took the leave of Iluvatar and descended into it. But this condition Iluvatar made, or it is the necessity of their love, that their power should be thenceforward to be contained and bounded in the world, to be within it forever until it is complete, so that they are its life and it is theirs, and therefore they are named the Valar, the powers of the world. But when the Valar entered into Ea, they were at first astounded and at a loss, for it was as if naught were yet made which they had seen in vision, and all was but on point to begin and yet unshaped, and it, and it was dark. For the great music had been but the growth and flowering of thought in the timeless halls, and the vision only a foreshadowing. But now they had entered in at the beginning of time, and the valor perceived that the world had been but foreshadowed and foresung, and they must achieve it. So began their great labors and wastes unmeasured and unexplored, and in ages uncounted and forgotten, until in the deeps of time and in the midst of the vast halls of Ea there came to be that hour and that place where it was made of the habitation of the children of Iluvatar. And in this work the chief part was taken by Manwe and Uli and Olmo, but Melkor too was there from the first, and he meddled in all that was done, turning it, if he might, to his own desires and purposes, and he kindled great fires. When therefore earth was yet young and full of flame, Melkor coveted it, and he said to the other Valar, This shall be my own kingdom, and I name it unto myself. But Manwe was the brother of Melkor in the mind of Iluvatar, and he was the chief instrument of the second theme that Iluvatar had raised up against the discord of Melkor, and he called unto himself many spirits, both greater and less, and they came down into the fields of Arda and aided Manwe, lest Melkor should hinder the fulfillment of their labor forever, and earth should wither ere it flowered. And Manwe said unto Melkor, This kingdom thou shalt not take for thine own wrongfully, for many others have labored here no less than thou, and there was strife between Melkor and the other Valar. For that time Melkor withdrew and departed to other regions, and did there what he would, but he did not put the desire of the kingdom of Arda from his heart. Now the Valar took to themselves shape and hue, and because they were drawn shape after the man. 
suffer no loss of our being. Therefore the valor may walk, if they will, unclad, and then even the Eldar cannot clearly be perceive them, though they be present. But when they desire to clothe themselves, the valor take upon the form some as of male and some as of female, for that difference of temper they had even from the beginning, and it is but bodied forth in the choice of each, not made by the choice, even as with us male and female may be shown by the raiment, but is not made thereby. But the shapes wherein the great ones array themselves are not at all times like to the shapes of the kings and queens of the children of Eluvatar. For at times they may clothe themselves in their own thought, made visible in forms of majesty and dread. And the valor drew unto them many companions, some less, some well nigh as great as themselves, and they labored together in the ordering of the earth and the curbing of its tumults. Then Melkor saw what was done, and that the valor as powers visible, clad in the raiment of the world, and were lovely and glorious to see, and blissful, and that the earth was becoming as a garden for their delight, for its turmoils were subdued. His envy grew then the greater within him, and he also took visible form, but because of his mood and the malice that burned in him, that form was dark and terrible and he descended upon Arda in power and majesty, greater than any other of the Valar, as a mountain that wades in the sea, and has its head above the clouds, and is clad in ice, and crowned with smoke and fire. And the light of the eyes of Melkor was like a flame that withers with heat, and pierces with a deadly cold. Thus began the first battle of the Valar, with Melkor for the dominion of Arda, and of those tumults the elves know but little. For what has here been declared is come from the Valar themselves, with whom the Eltele spoke in the land of Valinor, and by whom they were instructed. But little would the Valar even tell of the wars before the coming of the elves. Yet it is told among the among the Eldar, that the Valor endeavored ever, in despite of Melkor, to rule the earth and to prepare it for the coming of the firstborn. And they built lands, and Melkor destroyed them. Valleys they delved, and Melkor raised them up. Mountains they carved, and Melkor threw them down. Seas they hollowed, and Melkor spilled them. And naught might have peace or come to lasting growth. For as surely as the Valar began a labor, so would Melkor undo it or corrupt it. And yet their labor was not all in vain. And though nowhere and in no work was their will and purpose wholly fulfilled, and all things were in hue and shape other than the Valar had as first intended, slowly nonetheless the earth was fashioned and made firm. And thus was the habitation of the children of Eluvatar established 